what is capillary action? It's the ability for a fluid to flow against gravity. Okay, who was the person in the Western world who either who rediscovered capillary action? I know I'm keeping my mind. It's just too esoteric. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci. And the company that is developing this new technology is a brush company called Da Vinci. They're German, but they're called Da Vinci because of Leonardo. So these air pockets create capillary action, which helps the brush function similar to a natural hair. Another technology from the same company is by taking, this is viewed from on top, taking filaments of different sizes and shapes, bundling them in a brush, creating air pockets in between, again, creating capillary action. Uh, da Vinci's synthetic acrylic oil brush is called top acrylic. So there's no overarching name for Say again? So, so there's no general name for No, no, because this is patented material by that company. So they put their own little name on it. Here's a question for you guys. Which is more cost effective? 695 synthetic brush, 69.95 natural hair brush, which is a better buy. Why? It's so much more expensive. Why is it a better buy? That's a lot longer. Only if you can clean your brush as well. If you don't clean your brush as well, it doesn't last long. Synthetic brushes tend to break down, at least the cheap ones, somewhere between five seconds and three weeks. <laughs> the good ones do not, but they're at the same price. The good ones are expensive, and they really are well made. The natural hair brush maintains its shape. You gotta clean your brushes well, and it's a better thought. How do you maintain your brushes other than cleaning them well? well one way is to recognize, and this will be the last thing I talk about, Three layers of your painting. I'm simplifying your painting. Underpainting, middle part of your painting, top layer of your painting. What kind of brush are you going to use for this layer? Messed up. I like that word. Messed up. Not in good shape. Something you have already. Some weird synthetic, some weird bristle that's kind of broken down and hardly working for you. You're laying in color. Laying in shapes, getting the basic composition for most of us. And you're more aggressive. You tend to press hard as a general rule. Now you're up to this layer. Depending on how you paint, you might be painting the same way. I don't know. But most of us get a little bit more sensitive. Now you move up. Maybe now you have a, a brand new synthetic or a brand new bristle or something that's in nice shape because these marks are more important. Now you're at the third layer the top layer. You still, depending on how you paint, might be here, or, or this layer might be here, but what if this layer included me trying to paint every eyebrow that you have, one stroke at a time? Not trying to have brush does Synthetics can't come to that kind of point. Bristles can't come to that kind of point. But by this stage, I'm not abusing the brush. I'm really nice and light. And I'm using it for a specific thing. So the th main thing you want to think about when you're using a brush, it's a lot to think about. It's an extension of your hand. Is it making the mark you want? Does your painting have a lot of different types of marks that are needed? Are you doing blending and detail in the same painting? Because if you're doing blending and detail in the same painting, that's two different brushes. You can't use the same brush for both. What if you're doing blending and detail and scumbling? Scumbling is usually the old messy brush. That's three brushes. So we're going to change our brushes. Think of it like a superpower. We're going to just fly, and we're going to be able to fly with extra vision. The more things you can do in a painting, the more expressive the painting becomes. And we are all different. So there's no way that one person can say, I just use one brush and it works for me. And it's like, okay, that works for you. But Maybe not for another person. 
Okay, I lied the last thing I ever see. This was the last thing I ever see. It has to do with what you're going through right now. Because I have gone through what you're going through. The class. The class is a pretty special thing. You're not going to have it if you continue painting just to paint. You're not going to have a class. It's just going to be a moment. Who's going to tell you what to do? When to stop? All that other stuff. Class has a dynamic that we should not take for granted. It's pretty special. Uh, I know that when I was taking a class, I remember having problems behind me. And I'd ask the teacher, and he's kind of telling me what to do. And I just wanted him to blend for like 20 minutes so I could just watch. But there are other people to talk to. So I set myself up next to a student who was blending with me. And I just watched. I didn't look at their images so much, I just watched them. And I went, right off the bat, I realized, oh, they were a lot calmer than I am. <laughs> and that helped. But, you know, it's sort of like, if you're in this thing together, uh, basically, you should teach each other. You should observe each other. Don't be bashful. The group is a great thing. Uh, and no matter what you think about yourself, the chances are, you're not the worst, you're not the best, you're somewhere in the middle, for most of us. It's a good place to be. And just use the dynamic as well as you can. That's it. Thanks for putting up with me. Thank you. Okay. Great. So do you guys have any specific questions? Is that okay to observe some of the other paintings? Sure. Yeah. You can look at them. Do you want to see my work? My site was supposed to be rebuilt and up online today. It was not. But hopefully by next week, Glenn Brill. B-R-I-L-L. Two N's, two L's. Yeah. But it's not online right now.